Good morning, everyone. How are you? How are you? Let me know if the volume is good. Team David, beat out Jeremy. Very good, Brooke. Uh, let me know if you can hear me all right. <clears throat> it's good. Hey, Justin. Good morning. Good morning. We're on it this morning. It's Friday. It's training day. I wake up every Friday excited. Uh, so excited. Um, it's 11 a.m. Training. Today is about the ego. And I have been doing my research and tightening up the hair. <laughs> Tighten up the hair. Oh, man. Uh, you don't like my hair, man? I'll get it for Jeremy. There we go. Uh, thank you, Jesse, joining us. Let's get right to some questions. Getting into it this morning. Uh, see who's on board. And Freddie Billions is here looking for... Carlos might join us today, the incredible Carlos Rodriguez, my eSport ego training, edging goodness out of your life, applicable to business and life. You will enjoy it immensely. I guarantee it, as they say in New Orleans. All right. Doesn't our ego save us in a physical respect? And I'll get into that. That's a good question. So the ego has a purpose and it will save you from jumping off a bridge. Uh, but it also, a lot of times, is a cause for us to jump off the bridge. It fights itself. Uh, let's see who's here, wants to join. Uh, give me some more questions as we're getting here, 8 a.m. Uh, Freddie Billions, Mustafso, what's up, Mike? Good morning, everyone. Andy, let me know where you're calling in from today. Welcome, everybody. It's always, always, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Got another question what is the good ego? Ah, that's a good question. The good ego uh, is the one that edges goodness into your life and uh, allowing that. Um, we're, we're good with that. The good ego is the one that accelerates and grows and understands that we are in a unbelievable power and source and that the only utilization of the ego is to protect us from physical harm. So f make sure we're fed, make sure we're not killed, make sure that uh, we understand physical fear and, and diminish capacity for our embodiment uh, and be able to separate that from the mind and of course the soul. Canada's in the house, England's in the house, South Africa's in the house, SoCal is here as well. Let's get uh, to some more questions. Thank you so much, Edward. Uh, loving that. We're getting there. Uh, the dark night of the soul. That was Blaine Bartlett. That is the ego. Correct. It is the dark night of the soul. <laughs> I'm trying to get that up there for you. You like that? I uh, would love to be able to pin up there how people get to training if they haven't uh, <coughs> registered yet for Friday. So I know Team Melcher's in the house. Let's put up their uh, text or email. Some way people can go ahead and register for free training. Uh, we are going to do 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Free training for everyone on the ego. As in getting out of uh, the things. Top five books. Uh, Wayne Dyer's Power of Intention. Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Course in Miracles. Um the other the other two vary um but right now i'd say um wow, i read so many different things uh gosh i re really like surrender experiments still and uh clears james clears atomic habits uh, our future is determined by our habits and so understanding how to utilize the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious continuum is a great way uh, to learn that. And that book, uh, I was talking about vote for what you want, allows you to vote for what you want. As being awoke and away from this stimulated matrix we are in. <laughs> That's a great definition as well for the ego. Um, let me close that out. There we go. I think my boy is here. Los Ocelotto Rodriguez, my man, what's going on? G2's famous eSport god. What's going on? We're waiting for him to come in. This should be fun. A lot of people want to know what's going on with eSports and G2, and I'm trying to wait for you. Uh, here we go. Top five biographies to read. Oh, man. 
now you're talking Ben Franklin's biography is one jobs another uh Roosevelt another um Einstein for sure uh I'm waiting for Carlos here trying to connect welcome Carlos we are waiting for you my friend it doesn't look like it's connecting here what uh we try one more time should be easily connecting let's see here try it this way add you in technology is a friend let's all utilize our collective beliefs to get carlos in here boom shifting the energy <laughs> there we go how's it going i just shift my energy to get you in here man <laughs> what's going on this morning well, uh, well, I'm just realizing for the, my hair is just very long, so I need a barber uh, at some point in the near future. Uh, but <laughs> other than that is good. It's good. Yeah, a lot of people are wearing hats these days. I, Jeremy got on me for my hair this morning. I'm gonna go put some mousse in or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just yes, too afraid. I, to you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually reach out for the hair for, for, the, for the head. That's the right call. That's exactly the right call. Is it? There you go. All right, it's the right call. Oh, it's a good hat too. So <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in the world of esports, my friend? Well, right now, a lot of stuff is going on. Right now, uh, you know, uh, this is the, sort of the silver lining for us that uh, with all the COVID-19 stuff happening, sort of more eyes are, you know, looking at video games and video game competition, which is pretty much what esports is, as, uh, you know, as a, as a form of entertainment. And, and, you know, it's a good thing for us is, I guess, the silver lining. It, it still doesn't make it all better, but, but you know, it, honestly, it, it does make me happy that, that as years go by, esports and gaming in particular are being more, you know, widespread and more, you know, uh, commercially viable and people around the world see them as, uh, as, see it as a form of entertainment as opposed to just a, as, as a nerd pool, you know, which is what it used to be. Yeah. And the cool thing is all the kid kid, all the cool kids want to be, you know, so I got involved in esports. I invested with Meta World Peace, Marcus Colston, uh, The Weeknd, all the cool kids. We all went in, you know, with Splice, which is now Overactive Media, and Chris Overholt mm -hmm. and those guys. And uh, I think it's the great equalizer. It's the great unifier because men, women, all races, all religion, all ethnicities, all languages, even disabilities are capable of being great esport participants and fans uh you know it's an incredible thing and it keeps growing and growing i have a quick question because i keep telling people we haven't even seen the chasm yet it's so big that people don't even realize how big this sport gets compared to any of the other traditional sports from soccer to cricket to nfl basketball those all aggregated into one may still just pale in comparison to how many people will be playing, participating, and watching esports through the next decade. Well, I've, I've been a sports fan all my life. And, you know, I've been following Formula One since forever, soccer, NBA, increasingly so. So it's, it's been, it's been, I mean, it is clear to me that, you know, the, the amount of audience these sports have has either reached its peak or it is really, really hard to see an acceleration on the audience, right? Whereas now for esports and video and competition, you see that the access to technology, it's cheaper and better every day. So the, the, the mass market hasn't been really reached uh, just yet. So every day I see more and more kids uh, having earlier and earlier access to, you know, YouTube and you name it. And my son being the first, my son is about to be four years old and he's like with the iPad everywhere he goes and watching a lot of videos and stuff. He's watching a lot of video game playthroughs as well. Uh, so it's not too long until he uh, finds himself watching a G2 Esports video, right? So yeah. it just goes to show there's sort of like a generational phenomenon. And, and it's, it's, it's hard to believe that it will not be uh, the largest entertainment industry for a very, very long time. No doubt. The one aspect that I found intriguing that got me to invest was I was going to the final of the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Golden State Warriors. And mm -hmm. I took, my son was six or seven at the time. And we were on the trolley going over and he points at Oracle and he said, you know, that's where they had the League of Legends championship. And I said, oh, really? He goes, yeah, they sold out. And I said, no, 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 that's a video game. 
those people aren't there in person. And he's arguing with me at six or seven. Oh no, they sold out. And then my media guy that was there, you know, doing the videos, he looks at me like, Dave, they sell out. And they actually the, sold out. <laughs> yeah, the, the aspect though, the live aspect that people would fill arenas, you know, is incomprehensible to so many people, the traditional sports media, traditional sports owners, still not, you would think people who own major teams would be familiar with how I think accelerated the sport is uh, and the entertainment is. And yet there's still this gap between and a tremendous amount of people that play, watch and market to and traditional even owners, let alone traditional sports fans and participants. Um, why, in what aspect is it that live, you know, people want to watch people play video games live? Well, I guess it's the level of, you know, interaction with the moment, right? If you watch something as a video on demand, you, there's no empathy with the rest of the people watching. I feel like when you watch something live, what makes it, what it makes it special among other reasons is that you know that there's millions of people around the world feeling the same emotions you're feeling. And that, emo and that empathetic feeling, I think, is what creates the difference between watching live or not. That's why it happens to me very often that I just want to chill during the, during the evening. And, and I rarely watch video on demand. I watch something live because I want to feel a part of a group. I want to feel um, like I read things. I want to feel like, like a give and take, like a, like a life give and take, right? And 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 I don't think that. And I think same same story. Why would people watch TV? They they know that many other people are watching TV at that, at that very moment, and it sort of makes you feel in sync with the moment and comfortable, you know. Yeah, I think there's a oneness to it, right? That when we're watching it live, that we're all connected to each other, like you said, energy and motion emotionally. Uh, you know, I do a lot of business coaching, and I had a restauranteur, and I told him the exact same thing. I said, you know, if I was Uber or Lyft or you know, Grubhub or Uber Eats or even an individual franchise restaurant, I would have, you know, like Chipotle, Taco Tuesday night. And I would have live, you know, everyone delivered the food and, you know, on this big webinar, just eating together because they're sharing the same food. There's that emotional aspect that you're, yep. you know, sitting here. And if you and I, for example, grabbed a beer right now, and you know, toasted each other and drank the beer, it would have a different emotional aspect than us even just talking together live. 100%, 100%, there's that interaction, right? And especially when you see right now, uh, live stuff, right? Especially like digital live stuff. You typically not only see um, the screen of what's happening in the game and the showcasters commenting it, which already is, you know, in my opinion, uh, cool enough, but you also read a lot of the comments that anonymous people are typing about the game so you sort of see like like a, like a, you know like a hive mind i think uh, aspect to it so you see if there's a good play you end up expecting what kind of comments are about to come if there's a bad play you end up expecting what kind of comments and emotes are going to come in the chat and i think that's actually very very funny and honestly i i take pride in i don't know if it's take pride is the right word but i enjoy my free time a lot by reading, you know, Twitter comments and by reading people and by just reading what people have to say. And to me, it's so amazing to be able to read the chat of these live streams and to see how people react live to things that happen. You sort of get the feeling of how these people are, even though you're not them. And even though you're not talking to them, you get a feeling of how the young generation is thinking about everything. What do they think about a certain game? What do they think about a certain player, a certain play style? You get a feeling of all those things and download that information and then use it, you know, to create content that's more appealing to yourself or to choose the right game to be a part of. Like that to me is what is, is I think, the most fun aspect of, of my job. Do you let uh, your wife read the comments? <laughs> yes, yes. My, my, my wife gets a bit more pissed. Yeah, me too. I, 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 I don't get pissed at all, you know, because, because I mean, when you're in a, in a position where people see you every day, and it's been like that for 15 years now in this industry, it's like every day, there's, there's a lot of people that want you to fail. And it's like every tournament you win, it's like, um, you know, by the way, we actually lost against your team in playoffs, but then we won against them. So we, we yeah. threw you out and then we won the whole <laughs> tournament. Uh, that, that happened a couple of weeks ago. And and the first time we lost against you guys, everybody was like, yeah, you know, you deserve it. Blah, blah. All the haters, <laughs> right? And then when we won the whole thing, we, won, we ended up winning the tournament. 
then you say, yeah, but the next one you'll get destroyed. It's been I, like that for like 15 years. So that's why I didn't bring it up. That. That's why I didn't bring it up because I knew if I brought up the win, you'd be like, ah, who won the tournament? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great. All right, la last question for G2. Obviously, uh, the situation we're in has stages and we're going to evolve out of it. What are some of the plans for G2 as we kind of get out of the different stages of this? Well, the way we envision G2, and, and it was the way I found it, when I found it six years ago, approximately five and a half years ago, I had in mind always the, the fact that we are entertainers, you know, and I see G2 Esports as I, the same way I see a gladiator's job. A gladiator's job, um, you know, is to go out and, and do his best, you know, win, hopefully. And, but if he loses, you want the gladiator to be entertaining enough to have the favor of the people so that the, the Caesar never does like this, right? <laughs> so that he's always alive. So that's, I think, our job. And, and, when I, when just, and that translated into a company, I guess, uh, a goal. Uh, what we truly are is a media company, and we, we, what we truly want to do is to entertain. Sometimes we raise trophies, which happens to be a lot as of late. Uh, sometimes uh, we lose, you know, finals, zero three, and then we just have to deal with it and create content that's emotional and empathetic towards the people that follow us. And uh, so the, the next step for us is to keep creating media properties, keep making people have goosebumps, laugh, and sort of make our brand attributes clear. That is awesome. Well, we're sharing in that mission at Overactive and see you guys as a stellar representation of what we can do in esports and i certainly appreciate you taking the time my friend i look forward to seeing you in person next time we play perfect thank you very much man yeah. hi carlos have a good Take day care. everybody the great carlos rodriguez Osolote, my man i didn't get to share any of my spanish with him i could tell uh i get the early morning uh little breakfast action there muy muy bien El machismo ocelote el mundo. Gracias. Uh, perfect. Anyway, uh, we got a big Friday. Starting off good. Getting everything on. But we got a bunch of eagle questions for Friday's training. Uh, 11 a.m. today. I got it pinned up there how to join. It's free. There will be nothing sold on there. I promise you. Uh, is the ego neutral and our focus makes it positive or negative? Most people use it negatively. Yeah, I think anything, you know, take, I used the example yesterday on the SAP uh, deal I was on, you know, look at a cotton ball and then make it an evil cotton ball, <laughs> right? Make cotton balls edge goodness out of your life. You can think of a ton of different ways uh, that cotton balls are dangerous and uh, you could give meaning to anything that you see. And so what's up, Toby Walton? Hola, que pasa? Por que no comes la comida, amigo? Thank you for joining me. Everybody, let me know where you're calling in from. The best example of a business owner. Uh, I, there's so many better business owners than me. I'm doing my best, though. I am in the pursuit of my perfection. We got a special series uh, coming up, by the way, at 8.30 today. I'm going to do The Secrets of Life, um, and I'm bringing in some serious players for The Secret of Life, and uh, you're going to like it. I promise you. Lawrence from Memphis, thank you very much. New York City in the house hello simon great to hear from you by the way uh appreciate you my friend uh welcome detroit in the motor city thank you thank you christy dryling is so beautiful inside and out good morning thank you for joining me you're a wonderful wonderful friend um and leader by the way if you haven't checked her out she's an amazing inspiration uh what did you have for breakfast i always have the same thing i, I eat every two hours um so I worked out this morning and I had a fiber and protein bar and uh, some grapefruit juice. And my next meal will be a acai bowl after this. <laughs> anyway, whatever rocks your world, I'm going to be doing a challenge, a clean challenge for 30 days. Uh, everybody can join me as well with Kenzai. Uh, it's an all natural habit, uh, lifestyle habit company. And never seen one before. Uh, so anyway, Let's go to the next question, getting on this here. A lot of ego questions. This makes me excited about today. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in my perspective of how to utilize the ego. How can you use ego in network marketing? Well, I think understanding other people's ego is the key. Um, <laughs> Nikki knows Bubby's coming. I know it. We got 10 more minutes and Bubby's coming. You can speak fluent English and Spanish. Never tell anyone you know another language uh, or technology. 
uh, it's better to keep that secret and then just utilize it uh, for there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, let's see who's coming on here. So, oh, Simon is here. Sorry, Simon. I'm like, hey, Simon, thanks for reaching out. Uh, where'd you go? Let me get you on here. The great Simon Huck. There he is. Awesome. Let's grab him here. I'm really interested in talking to Simon. He does emergency kits, and I'm curious. There he is. Hey, David. Hey, buddy. How are you? How you doing? I'm waking up. I had a... I'm good. <laughs> good, good. Where are you? I'm in New York City. Oh, of course. Well, I am so curious because yeah. I know you guys are uh, you, you are uh, co-founded Judy, but you guys do emergency kits. And I think yep. there's a, di a difference between abundance in emergencies and scarcity in emergencies. And I think it's really important for what you're doing for people to understand how we can be of service and of help in an abundant way. Uh, to be cautious and protect and to help compared to the scarce things, you know, like the rush on toilet paper that we had. Um, right, right. And would love to get your insight on the appropriate way to be careful, the appropriate way to help uh, and be prepared for an emergency. Right. You know, it was in 18 months developing Judy um, and Judy is an emergency preparedness brand that not only provides physical products, so emergency kits, but our biggest lesson happened three months into our development when we set, sat with a room of emergency managers and responders, and they shared all of these incredible stories. And the common denominator in all of these stories was a fundamental lack of education and planning. So what you're seeing right now with COVID-19 is rampant misinformation, panic purchasing, toilet paper, you know, paper towel, things that you may not necessarily need. Um, and what you don't see is a lot of planning. 60% of American families have no emergency plan in place. Um, so what's great and what we've been seeing is that Judy is becoming almost like a catalyst for the conversation. You know, what is your evacuation plan? Have you as a family practiced evacuating your home? You know, who's your emergency out-of-state contact? There's so many things that you need to know um, prior to an emergency hitting. And I think that's true financially as well. Do you guys utilize any aspects for the financial literacy of emergencies? You know, I think our country is seeing how short-sighted not only are we with 60% of the people not prepared for an emergency at all in the physical aspects, but I think we're about at 75% on the economic aspects of an emergency as well. Like, is there anything in advice of, you know, keeping gold coins or, you know, some sort of facilitation on that side? Well, part of the uh, kind of emergency preparedness 101 is making sure you have small denominations of cash during an emergency. Because what you see is during large scale emergencies, um, if you want to purchase something at a store or from a vendor, you need to have cash on you. So having that in your emergency folder, along with your passport, your IDs, your health insurance information, having that emergency, emergency document folder is so critically important. And before I started this journey, I was the worst prepared person. I didn't know how to work a fire extinguisher. I was not the ideal Judy. And over you know 18 months, you, you just hear so many stories of people who've been in emergencies and weren't prepared. And the aftermath of the emergency um, almost exceeds that of the actual initial incident. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the philosophies I have in my mission, which is a little bit simpler, just happiness, uh, you know, empowering others to empower others to be happy. You know, I think yep. on the emergency side, it works the same way that, you know, getting to the first responders, getting to the teachers, getting to our larger leaders that are, you know, I think capable and accountable for helping their groups understand here's some simple and, and they are you and i both know that in the the emergency kit and the emergency philosophy and education it's not a complex thing you're not macgyver you, you don't have to create you know all of these fantastic right. things from toilet paper you know you don't have to right. <laughs> you know build a ladder uh but you know it, it's simple uh, a practice and i think a lot of times we don't lower the bar enough for those who empower others what types of programs or who are those power sponsors 
that can disseminate the information and the kits so that next time we have, which we always do, some sort of exigency or emergency that we're more prepared? Well, it's, it's a great question. And when you think about preparedness, the reason why this as a category is so challenging and why the Red Cross and FEMA have said, hey guys, we've actually failed in this mission because you're asking families across the country to think about worst case scenarios. So it's a dreaded conversation. Nobody wants to sit around talking about a worst case scenario and how to prepare for it. So what we do is we delay it, we avoid it, we do everything we can not to think about it or talk about it. Um, and I think the other challenge around emergencies is most people think if there is an emergency, there's nothing they can do to prepare for it. And the other cohort of people think that an emergency is not gonna happen. And I think one thing that COVID has taught us is that we're all vulnerable to emergencies and we are going to think about ways that we can prepare even small things. I mean, our whole philosophy, you know, at Judy is it's a 15% change in behavior. If you can change by 15%, if you can talk to your family about what an emergency plan looks like, who's your at a state contact? Who do you call um, if you can't get in touch with your parents? Who, who do you call, um, you know, if there's someone on your street who's vulnerable, is there someone checking in on that person? There's so many easy things to do and building that plan um, just starts with a conversation. Yeah, and a, and, a, and a practice, you know, I think routes with transportation is such a critical component uh, of an emergency. You know, just having the knowledge of where to go if something happens beyond even who, who to call. I, you know, I take it a step farther. I always like to have an electric and a gas uh, vehicle you know, because right. in different times of emergencies, I know being able to drive on electricity may, may make a difference to, to move somewhere uh, compared to gas or vice versa. If there's no electricity, <laughs> to have the capability to move uh, a certain right. distance to those places. Um, what's the biggest uh, misnomer or, you know, fallacy about emergencies that people have that we could dispel? I think the idea, the biggest one, which is the guiding light for Judy, is that there's nothing you can do to properly prepare yourself for an emergency. So don't do anything. Um, time and time again, we have met with emergency managers who have had these life-changing conversations with people, talking to families about basic fire safety. I had a friend who had renovated her home and um, she had her two babies asleep and the fireplace started um, burning through the foundation of her home. And she smelled smoke. She didn't know where it was coming from. She had a small fire lit. And within 20 minutes, um, the entire home had burned to the ground. And she had made some decisions during that, like opening windows in her kitchen to let the smoke out, which fueled the fire. She had made some decisions during that experience that made, the, made it worse. Because she didn't have the basic fire safety information that all of us should have. Because when you, I look at her and say, well, here's the manual. This is what you need to study. It's not compelling. It's, it's not engaging. So we're here at Judy trying to make safety simple and make it something that's digestible, that's actionable, and that empowers you. Yeah, it's so interesting with fire that oxygen, electricity, uh, and water are all misunderstood. And yep. they can exacerbate a situation. And so many lives are lost in the world because people don't know the effects of water, oxygen, and electricity on fire, <laughs> right. or even any, or even gas, which is uh, an, you know oxygen related. But you know, it's amazing. And there's all these myths and misnomers around what to do during an earthquake or a tornado. I mean, you see all these Hollywood movies that depict a person sitting next to or standing next to the door frame, you know, in their home. It's actually the most dangerous place to be during an earthquake. And I think that what happens is when you are looking through the Hollywood lens, you start to think that those are the actual ways that you're supposed to prepare and you forget that this is a movie. Right. So we, we spent a lot of time, you know, going through Hollywood movies and dispelling all of these myths. It's amazing. Well, where can people go to get more information uh, to prepare themselves for an emergency? So you can go to judy.co and um, we also have this incredible subscription service that's completely free. We send out tips, reminders, videos, just uh, kind of the one, two, threes on how to be prepared for all emergencies. 
Oh, it really, really makes a difference. And I wanted to have you on to share that information. And we'll go ahead and pin that up as well to get everybody uh, the information uh, that necessary. It's funny, I'm doing a training on ego today. And it's too bad we couldn't pit, you know, management of ego because the biggest fear, like you said, is fear itself is stopping people from actually getting prepared. And I'll tell you oh, 100%. That. So I, pre I appreciate you and all your effort. And it's so cool. Uh, the humility that you have, that you've gone from complete ignorance yourself into an expert of uh, the situation and empowering others. So thank you so, so much, Simon. I really appreciate you. Thank you, David. This has been great. You're awesome. Take care. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Awesome. Simon Huck here with Judy uh, and giving free information, free empowerment. You got to check them out. Uh, we all need to be prepared, not, not only, uh, you know, for fire and earthquake and, you know, these different types of emergency, but financially, right? I think the same philosophy applies to the financial aspects of what we should be looking at and doing. Well, I'm ready now for my special guest. You guys are going to love this. This is the first of many, but it's the series of uh, the unbelievable um, Bubby. And we are going to have a series called The Secret to Life. And so I figured I'd take the most experienced person. Uh, there she is. Hi, Bubby. I'm David Meltzer. Hi, David. I'm Bubby. Hi, yeah, Bubby, I'm, I am, I'm a huge fan of yours because there's a saying, apples don't fall far from the tree, which means I love Shelly. I love Jakey Bakey. And you must be an extraordinary woman. And I wanted to get some advice from you. Is that OK? Sure. The, the main question is, someone who has lived such a fulfilled life with such a beautiful family and so healthy, what do you consider the secrets to life? I think the single most important secret to life is a, trying very hard to achieve your potential. And then when you achieve your potential, being happy with your accomplishments and raising a, a well-adjusted, happy, loving family. But I, think you first have to, but I think it's very important. Some people say, well, my, it's more important to raise a family, and that can be my single achievement. But I think a person, especially a woman of my generation, who can have a career and be fulfilled in her career makes a better mother and a better parent and a better grandmother. Well, I can see that in your family especially. Do you, today, there's so much fear and uncertainty, and you've lived through a lot of different circumstances where people are afraid, accelerated change. What are some of the pieces of advice that you give to people during this time of the COVID and, and so many people are so afraid? I think there's good reason to be afraid. I think anybody who says they're not afraid is gilding the lily and is not being honest. I'm afraid. We're all afraid. We're afraid. Will the economy bounce back? Will our loved ones be well? That's our number one fear. God forbid someone we love or someone we know. I have friends who have already died from COVID. So it's frightening, especially to people of my generation who are the most vulnerable. But I've lived through so much World War II with the Nazis obliterating six million Jewish people. And we bounced back. And I look at these survivors and how they, they survived. And they, I mean, you can't compare economic fallout to extermination of six million people. And the fact that they went on, they married again, even after losing wives and children, they built new families, they built careers. And by and large, they adapted and were successful and they lived through this. And I think there's no greater testament than, and, and veterans who lived through World War II who were not Holocaust survivors, people who lost their lives and yet came back and their families rebuilt. And I think we'll get through this. This is devastating in terms of health, in terms of the economy, but we'll get through it. And we're going to, life will never be the same again. I think as it was never the same again uh, at the thought of the, and we just celebrated, Joe, my shot the loss of so many, six million Jews. And life was never the same again for any of us, but we'll get through it. And if we learn from it, we'll be stronger. And do you have a favorite saying or a favorite life lesson that you can share with us? Well, I think that in raising a family, it's very important 
to give your children a sense of confidence. Tell them they're wonderful. Encourage them. I also believe very much in sports as a way for children to learn how to live, that they learn how to compete, they learn how to lose, and they learn how to win. But I remember once one of my granddaughters came back and the um, coach said to her, it told all the kids, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's how you play the game. I don't buy that philosophy. So I said to her, go back and tell your coach, if it doesn't matter who wins or lose, why do they keep score? I love that. I love that. And you, I've been told, are a huge NFL fan, quite knowledgeable. Who's your favorite team? Well, when I was growing up, I had the Colts. That was in the 1950s. The Baltimore course, Colts. The Baltimore Colts. I'm from Baltimore. And, of course, Johnny Unitas was an incredible, an incredible quarterback and the Baltimore Colts had the fearsome four Deacon Jones and that whole group that were incredible and now I love Aaron Rodgers first of all I think he's hot and, <laughs> an old lady thinks I'm friends with hot. Danica I'm friends with but Danica I'm a teller all, I think I think he's a great quarterback and um I I really like him I think Patrick Mahomes is amazing the way he engineers these comebacks I mean he looks so awkward when he's playing and passing the ball on the way he walks, but he's just a phenomenon. And of course, Brady is a great quarterback, but he was surrounded by a great team. You know, once he didn't have Gronkowski and some of these other people last year, it was harder for him to win the Super Bowl, which of course he didn't win. What an exciting game that was, by the way. So I love football. I think it's a great sport. I love watching it with my children and my grandchildren, especially Jakey Bakey. So what can I tell you? Well, I am a huge Jakey Bakey fan. Uh, you should be. And he is an incredible young man. And like I say, apples don't fall far from the tree. When this is all over, you and I will have to go to a game, hopefully a Colts Chargers game maybe, and we'll see Philip Rivers in his return to the Colts against my Chargers and see what goes on there. Uh, any predictions, last thing, any predictions? Who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? I think probably Mahonis will take his team to the Super Bowl again. Oh, back-to-back, -back, Kansas City. It could be the 2020s. I think, I think not, so. I, think, I ve think Vegas agrees with you as well. I do. Well, they? Bob, <laughs> I didn't Bobby, know I, that Vegas said that. Yeah, I said do. I wasn't aware that Vegas had already predicted that. So there you go. Are you a big gambler? Maybe we'll put a bet no, on it. No, my yeah. late husband was a big gambler. He loved Las Vegas. I'm not a gambler. Uh, I love Las Vegas, but I'm not a gambler anymore either. And uh, But I am a big fan of you, your family, and I'm so grateful that you took the time to share your wisdom with us. You're the very first in my Secret to Life series. So I started with the Mahomes of wisdom. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. Thank you. Take care, Bubby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, so we're gonna start this series uh, and start it right. You can just see uh, great history, great human nature never changes. And whether you survive World War II, the Holocaust, World War I, Korean War, Vietnam War, 97, 2001 uh, with the towers, 2008 with the new recession and depression, or now here, there's always the future and hope will determine where we go it's managing the ego, and that's where we are going. Let's answer some questions. Don't forget, today, 11 a.m. Pacific time, we are on it um, with ego. Free training. You're not selling anything. Neither was Bubby. So we're going to continue through that. Uh, <laughs> he trained people. Yes, he does. Sorry about that. Let's get to the next question. We're getting through here. Dave, it's Justin. I see that. What's up, brother? Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> I'm joining the natural habit. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Justin. You're a great man. We'll see you at training as well. We got some great comments in here. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. I need someone like you to talk with my dad. You know, someone else talking to your dad's not going to help. And where you have to start in talking to your relatives that may not be aligned with you. Um, is understanding. And the best thing you can say to your dad or your parents is, hey, I'd like to understand where you're coming from. I'd like to understand what lesson you're trying to teach me. I'd like to understand what your goals, objectives are for me. And I appreciate that you have those. 
but I'm going to vote for what I want. And I'm going to live and learn from what you and other people uh, are helping me with. But in the end, I'm going to vote for what I want. And I'm going to learn the lessons as they come. And if they result in pain, physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual pain, I'm going to have to deal with that and realize I still got a lesson to learn. And if in turn, a year from now or 10 years from now or 30 years from now, I have to give myself forgiveness for not learning the lesson that you tried to give me, then so be it. But most importantly, uh, to especially your parents, uh, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I love you and appreciate you. Those are the four things that we want to share. I appreciate everybody today joining me. We got a big, big day ahead of us. Please, everybody, join me for free training. Invite your friends, family, associates. We're trying to create a collective consciousness of happiness, the most powerful disease virus ever that's shared by witnessing. Happiness also strengthens your immune system and unites all of us together in a shared emotional aspect. So thank you, thank you for joining me this morning. I'll see you in about two hours and 19 minutes on the free training. Uh, my number is below 949-298-2905 or email me at david at dmeltzer.com and we can register you quickly for the free training today and every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Everybody, thank you, Bubby. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate everyone's time, everyone for joining me and having those great questions as well. We do this every day and for good reasons because we are going to be kind to our future self and do good deeds. Have a wonderful day. See you in a couple hours.